Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I was very pleased to be invited to address you, and I regret that I can't be with you in person. This ministerial is indeed an exceptional occasion to discuss energy access, and I would like to congratulate Minister Peters for his preparation in advance of COP17 in December. I would now like to focus my remarks on the IEA's analysis of energy access and sustainability. And my first message in this context is that for us at the IEA, the age of cheap energy is over. And this has important consequences for all our economies, and especially developing ones. The energy upon which economic growth depends will simply cost more than it has in the past, whether as fossil fuels or otherwise. Efficiency and innovative decentralized solutions will thus play an important part, an important role in energy security and energy access in addition to climate sustainability. Now, according to estimates in the IEA's flagship publication, the World Energy Outlook, today there are 1.4 billion people around the world lacking access to electricity. And even by 2030, 1.2 billion people are likely to still be without electricity, unless additional dedicated policies are adopted. The greatest challenge is in the Sub-Saharan Africa, where today less than one-third of the population has access to electricity, the lowest level in the world. But electricity is not the only problem of modern energy access. Based on our joint analysis with the World Health Organization, more than 1.45 million people die prematurely each year from household air pollution due to inefficient biomass combustion. Deaths from diseases such as malaria or tuberculosis are expected to decrease, while household pollution deaths are likely to increase to 1.5 million by 2030. We need global recognition that this situation is unacceptable and that change is needed. Investment will be a key tool in tackling the energy access challenge. And the World Energy Outlook estimates that the annual investment required to achieve universal access to modern energy services is $36 billion by 2030. Almost half of this is needed in Africa. And this may seem like a great deal of money, but let's put it into perspective. In 2009, nearly ten, ten times that amount was spent worldwide on fossil fuel subsidies which mostly benefit rich and middle-income households. Or put it another way, the cost of achieving universal access in the 10 largest oil and gas exporting countries in sub-Saharan Africa is equivalent to only 0.4% of those governments' cumulative oil and gas revenues to 2030. So these are not impossible sums, but how to pay them? Foreign aid, yes, foreign aid will play an important role, but private sector investment will be essential. We need to look at innovative financing mechanisms which encourage foreign and domestic investment and at empowering local entrepreneurs to undertake sustainable community-based energy projects. Creating an environment to encourage such necessary investment requires good governance and stable energy policies, yes, yes, but also innovative and flexible solutions which promote the right technologies and achieve key goals at reasonable cost. Let me give you a few examples. Although grid extension will be important to achieving universal electricity access, decentralized and microgrid options have a role to play. Small, standalone renewable energy technologies such as Mini hydro or wind can often meet the electricity needs of rural communities more cheaply and much faster. And decreasing household pollution through the increased use of advanced biomass cook stoves and biogas systems is an even less costly endeavor than electricity access with significant life-saving health benefits. Now, some may see tension between improving energy access climate sustainability and energy security. But there is reassuring news here. The overall impact of improving energy access is expected to be relatively modest, 
while a huge number of people would be lifted out of energy poverty. Both CO2 emissions and oil demand would rise by less than 1%. So let me leave you with, with two proposals. First, we recommend that targets for energy be incorporated into the UN's Millennium Development Goals. And second, I would stress that sound energy policies are a prerequisite to enhancing economic growth and thus to alleviating poverty. The IA, the IA stands ready to provide its an analysis on low carbon energy access solutions, implementation methods and policy recommendations. And with this, I would like to wish you a productive discussion and I hope to see you all in Durban. Thank you.